2021 Dodge Durango SRT Hellcat is the world's most powerful production SUV, thanks to a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 under the hood making a staggering 710 horsepower. Despite all of that, it just hasn't won me over yet. And that's partly because I haven't really had a chance to let it off the chain. However, I'm up here on this remote mountain highway and I plan on giving this thing all it's got. But before we get into any of that, we need to talk about what it's like to live with the Hellcat on a daily basis. Surprisingly for a performance vehicle, the Durango is actually pretty comfortable. It's got a very smooth ride, it kind of glides over bumps with just a really gentle flap like you might expect of a German car instead of something wearing the Dodge badge. And these seats are fantastic. They're super supportive, they're super comfortable. Whoever designed these seats deserves an award, they're that good. However, it's not perfect. The throttle is really sharp and it's super difficult to kind of just glide away from an intersection without forcing your passengers into their seat backs. And additionally, we need to talk about fuel economy. The Durango is a 2021 only vehicle because it's not going to meet emission standards for 2022. And furthermore, right now we're getting about 12 miles per gallon in a steady state on the freeway. Now, no one said that a big 6.2 liter supercharged V8 needs to get Prius levels of fuel economy, but honestly, this thing should be better than that and it just isn't. Of course, fuel economy is kind of immaterial when you have this much power and this much sound under your foot. This is a lot of fun to drive for sure and it makes every on-ramp an absolute blast. But still, you know, if you're living with it on a daily basis, you have to make some compromises for that power and that speed. This vehicle does the Durango typical stuff pretty well. It's spacious for people and cargo, and it gives you a pretty comfortable ride even in city traffic. But ultimately, the Hellcat stuff just doesn't make a whole lot of sense out here. Now the Hellcat is starting to make more sense. We're off the highway, up on my favorite driving road, and it's really kind of coming together pretty nicely. We knew the Hellcat was gonna have tons of power, 710 horsepower, as I've said many times. But what I wasn't expecting was for it to be as kind of enjoyable to drive around corners as it is. It's not necessarily agile because there's no getting around that this is a big, heavy three row SUV, but there's a lot more grip than I expected, courtesy of summer tires on all four corners, measuring 295 millimeters wide. It's got a lot more tenacity than I was expecting. You don't chuck it into a corner like you might a Porsche Boxster or a Mazda Miata, but you can still kind of trust it to carry you through with more speed than expected. When you've got a lot of power at your disposal, you also wanna make sure that you can keep it under control, and the SRT Hellcat has you covered there as well. It's got front and rear Brembo brakes that offer consistent, smooth stopping distances, even when you're descending a mountain like we are right now. And then of course, we're coming up to my favorite part of the road, and I'm gonna show you why right here. <laughs> there is no beating a Hellcat for audible drama. This thing sounds like a million bucks. You've got tons of supercharger whine from the front, tons of exhaust bellow coming from the rear. It's just hilarious fun. Anywhere you are, if you mat the throttle, it puts a smile on your face. And that's really what the Hellcat's all about. And those seats that I mentioned earlier, they're just as good here as they were on the highway. They've got these thick Alcantara inserts that kind of hold you in place during cornering so you're not flopping all around the interior, which is kind of a rare combination to have a vehicle with very nice, comfortable freeway seats that also hold you in place when you wanna have some fun. Even so, there's something about the Durango Hellcat that just doesn't quite gel with me. The Durango just kind of feels out of its element. On the freeway, you've got a really cushy ride and these very comfortable seats, but the throttle is so aggressive and jerky, even in its gentlest setting. And then up here in the canyons, there's tons of grip from the tires and the steering is wonderful, but there's only so much you can do to hide the laws of physics. This is a heavy vehicle that just doesn't really want to go around corners that bad. Unless you've got a drag strip in your backyard and you tow a boat up and down it, the Durango's not really for you. Now, to be honest, I am not the Durango Hellcat's intended customer. For $90,000, I can think of a few other ways that I would rather have fun on this Canyon Road. Something like a Porsche Boxster GTS or even a Charger Hellcat widebody would be more entertaining for me. But then again, neither of those vehicles can tow 8,700 pounds like this one can. So if you're one of the few out there who needs to bring five of your friends and a big boat to the lake, and you need to get there in a hurry, the Durango Hellcat is perfect. <laughs>